Foxy! Fo this is my husband Eric and he is doing something pretty cool about recycling lead. Not only lead that we have dug up, but also lead that he recaptured. From Looks like a lot of dirt, but there's a lot of bullets in here. Dirt. There's a lot of bullets in here, too. Okay. So this is the outdoor setup my husband has for melting down the lead. He's going to be pouring it into those um, muffin tins, so it's kind of cool. So anyway, this is about the preferred batch I put in here so I get enough lead to actually pour. It's probably a little difficult to hear me because I have this respirator on, which you need to wear for these lead fumes. So anyway, all this on top is all the casings and dirt and some rocks. It actually floats on top of the lead. It's kind of, kind of a cool process, but you shake it out. The old spoon is slotted so the molten lead falls through. So that stuffs all the crap on top? Mm -hmm. Dirt and all the fill pieces. Oh, look how pretty the metal is underneath that. Fortunately, the wind is blowing away from me, or I'd have to be wearing a respirator too, I'm sure. Now, how long did you have to melt this stuff for? 20 minutes. 20 minutes? That was it? The first batch I did was uh, with a <coughs> propane cooker, which works fine, but there's no sense to burn enough propane and you can just use a campfire. All right, well, we are going to do is go ahead and check back with you in a few minutes as soon as you're pouring it, all right? Hey, guys, we're back. I just wanted to give you guys a little break while you finish just sifting out the junk. Do you want to show me the floating rock real quick? Oh, okay. So you don't think rocks float, but lead is more dense, so rocks float. That's actually really cool. You know, we're, we're getting down to this the little skim on the top. Uh-huh. Do you get all of that stuff out of there? Is it important? Yeah. Yeah. It's as pure wood as you can get, so you try to skim all that crap off. And I'll explain the fluxing process. The what? It's called fluxing. Oh, fluxing. Okay. I know, I know what flexing is. I just didn't understand what you were saying because you have that giant pink respirator on. Isn't it fashionable? It is. It's very cool. Okay, so now I'm going to put in a piece of wax, a can of wax, and it's going to probably ignite in the flame. You might want to stand back. Whoa! <laughs> you know, this helps get all the impurities to the float to the top. So. Now after I did that, you can see there's more crap to skim off the top. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to skim this the best I can. So now before we actually make weights and so forth, we'll go through this process again after we melt it. This is just kind of a rough sketch, so to speak. Okay, so now I've got this old ladle that I put on a handle for safety because you don't want to get close to the sled because 
It's about 650 degrees. So I'm letting this warm up a little bit. So did you skim off all the crap or is there still a little crap up top? There's still more here. And did you say you're going to do the wax flexing again or is that, that was just a yeah, one shot? Not now. This is just a, a rough process. Once I remelt it later to make weights, then we'll flex it again and try to get more of, this, more of these impurities out of here. So now I'm just going to pour in these cupcake molds which work, work pretty good. Now I'm assuming I can never use those cupcake molds again to make cupcakes, right? Well, only the guests who don't really care for it. <laughs> okay. The well, lead is toxic, so hence why I'm wearing the respirator. Bit of a redneck heater, but it doesn't cost anything to burn some old wood. Do the propane for more important things like drilling. So you can see there's more impurities on the top, but for this part it's not that critical. I think your setup here, you could actually cook if you wanted to on this, maybe with a different pot. A little bit tough to control the heat, but... This is something I threw together last night to try to give, the, give this a test. This is just kind of a test to prove the functionality of this. Now, one full skillet of this molten lead makes how many cupcakes? Uh, about eight. Let me just pour a little bit over. It's still a bit like I did here. It's no big deal because you can just remelt it the next round. It doesn't actually drip off of the ladle very well because it's heavy, so it drips quickly. It doesn't retain a puddle on the bottom. Now, do you need better pot holders for when you pick up that pot? It's getting old gloves, I guess. And the gloves are good enough? Yeah. For a short time, because it's very hot. And how long will it take for the pucks to cool? Five minutes. That's it? I wouldn't say cool. I mean, they'll, they'll turn solid at about five minutes. I'm going to skim a little bit more of this thread. Let's on the bottom see this black stuff that's on the bottom. Get a little junk to float to the top. Now, would some of that junk be, have been rust off the cast iron, maybe? Well, it's just impurities. This is a, not a pure flame, so it's probably picking up some carbon from the fire. Kind of a pretty uh, little once you get down to it. It's shiny. And you can see the first few ones I poured are already solid. They're solid cool. all the way through, like you could turn it over? No, I wouldn't do that yet. I'm going to back up because I'm not supposed to be breathing the fumes anyway. There. You can still see what you're doing. So how many pucks do you think you've made between yesterday and today? 30. 30? Oh. No, this part is a little tricky because the cast iron pot with lead in it, so it's very heavy. Oh, I suppose. Almost looks like you're pouring silver. I wish it was. <laughs> yeah, it would be cool. You know. <laughs> Quite a bit of crap left. There's enough I could afford one more, but I don't want to put that crud in the finished product, so leave that there. The next bit I put in there, it's got a molten layer to uh, induct the heater over there.
So now you're going to put in more raw lead. Cool. All right. Well, that's pretty much what this looks like. Very cool. And uh, as I said, whenever we are detecting, we pick up lead too. And this is what we do with it. So it's kind of cool. Digging out. Hey guys, check this out. Eric has improved his game. He's got himself a wind deflector so he can uh, do this when it's windy out. And I'm going to try to stay out of the smoke because that's like totally lethal. And he's making cupcakes. And there they are. I'm sorry, dear, what'd you say? Oh, awesome. Don't burn the dog. There's the dog. He's a good dog. He's hanging out. You're probably poisoning him with lead smoke. This looks dicey. <laughs> what happened to ladling them neatly into the thing? Too slow. <laughs> what? Too slow. I see. All right, well, we're gonna tune out. Say goodbye. Bye. The one thing I didn't mention, I probably should for safety's sake, is we're just uh, screening out the old lead at the range. So we got to make sure there's no live rounds in there. And if there was, you put it in the high lead, it's going to explode and shower you with molten lead. So Awesome. I always kind of look with the visually, I put a little bit in this other bucket, make sure there's no live rounds in there. Did you guys, um, did you find any live rounds? There was a 22, yeah. Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, good to know. Yeah, this is the bucket of lead that uh, they reclaimed from the range the other day. So that's the other source that we get lead from. Some of it's stuff we pick out of the metal detecting stuff and some of it's stuff he picks up directly. Mm -hmm.